name is Jack Crucial. I'm a physiotherapist and strength and conditioning coach that specializes in combat sports. Today, I'm going to go through the entire routine for a striking athlete. So I'm actually going to be working with one of my clients who is a Muay Thai fighter and MMA fighter. What we're going to be doing is showing you every single exercise, the warm up routine, the reps, the sets, why we're doing what we're doing. And it's a unique situation because he has a full size ring and heavy bag at his training facility. So I'm going to show you some information you won't see anywhere else on YouTube. Combat sports specific strength conditioning is very poorly done. If you're watching this, I don't want you to be one of those people that are doing the wrong thing for their training. So let's get stuck in. So if we first discuss his warm up, what we're doing is three rounds of five minutes of shadow boxing. He had an inter club fight the day before, and the most common things he was struggling with was number one, he was putting too much weight on his front foot. He has a boxing background. As a result, was getting the leg kicked a ton to that lead leg. So what we focused on was keeping that front leg light, and a good way to do that from a skill standpoint is adding a lot of checks after your specific combinations. So after you've thrown your combinations and kicks, making sure that you throw or that you place a check directly after that. That's going to build really good habits and it's also going to force you to keep that front foot light. If you're throwing a one, two, three, if you're too, if you're too planted on the front foot, it's going to be very hard for you to come up and check. Another small one new detail with his shadow boxing was he was, wasn't coming up completely from the check. We want to build really good habits in the early stages of shadow boxing. So what we did was ensure that he was getting his knee all the way up when he was checking his kicks. Another thing that you will notice us doing throughout the shadow boxing warm up is a ground based exercise, which was a kettlebell arm bar. So, what I'm going to do shortly is demonstrate why we're doing that as a warm up sequence as well. Another component you might have seen is the fact that I was coming forward towards Macarius and also getting him to come on the front foot. What we're working here with the final two rounds of the shadow boxing was ring dominance. So, when I was coming towards him, and trying to circle him and cut him into the corner. He was trying to escape, throw defensive counter punches, things of that nature. When he was coming forward towards me, he was trying to close the ring and cut me into a corner. So not only are we shadow boxing, but we're working our decision making simultaneously. So this warm up not only elevates his body temperature, gets his entire body moving, he's also improving his skill level and decision making simultaneously. So this is how you go from a beginner warm up to doing a few quad stretches to an elite level skill development based warm up. So the reason that we chose the kettlebell armbar is twofold. We're basically working the entire body simultaneously. So firstly, when we're up in this position here, we have to stabilize the rotator cuff, which is the shoulder muscles around our shoulder. Really important that we have to stabilize this for when we're throwing strikes. So when we're coming across, we need really good stabilization to make sure the kettlebell's not shaking around and to make sure that our wrist stays in a locked position. Secondly, as you can obviously see, my knee's coming across the body. So we're working the hips and the low back, the mid back, and we're rotating at the same time. So we're getting a variety of different aspects of mobility with the one exercise. So we're being very efficient with our time in between rests. So our rest periods of 30 to 60 seconds between those shadow boxing rounds, we're using this specific exercise. The main part of the session starts with a trap bar deadlift. We're not going to be doing it in a shoulder width stance as we typically do with a trap bar deadlift. If I come side on, what we're going to be doing is actually coming to a bit of a split stance. Obviously when you're a striking athlete, you're either in orthodox, or you're in Southpaw. So we're training these qualities with strength added to it. So in this split stance, but we're also elevating the back leg. What this is going to do is load up the front leg, the glutes, the hip a little bit more. So that's the first aspect. And we're going to be doing three sets of six, three reps in an orthodox position, and then three reps in a Southpaw position. So we're alternating between the two stances. Once we do that, we're immediately going to go into the heavy bag real sequence to develop power. Now, because we have a heavy bag at the gym, this is perfect. You might see these wearing his hand wraps when he's doing the trap bar deadlift. It's not for looks, it's so that we're safely striking the bag immediately after the lift. So, what we're going to be doing is a drill that I really like. We're actually going to punch past the heavy bag with our cross. So we're throwing past the bag, and then we're going to load up the hook. The reason that we're not throwing the two into the bag is because it's going to stop our rotation early. We want to almost over-rotate with that cross 
and then come and coil back so we're throwing really hard hooks into the bag. I would much prefer doing this over medicine ball work just because it is more sport specific. And a lot of the time when you are training, you're not getting enough really hard reps of the striking uh, effort. So what we're doing here is three sets of the hardest six hooks we can possibly do. Six of them in orthodox, so coiling, coming across, and then six in southpaw where we're doing the opposite. So good to train both sides. We're going to get a crossover effect when we're doing that. And then finally, we had a medicine ball squeeze. Macarius is predominantly a Muay Thai striker when he is striking, so we need to work on his clinch aspects and developing that as much as possible. A really important aspect of that is what is called isometric strength, which is being able to create a force without a change in muscle length. And we're doing exactly that when we're doing this squeeze. So when we hold that squeeze, what I was getting him to do is tuck his elbows and really pull in as hard as he possibly could for 30 seconds straight. So to summarize, we did the trap bar deadlift, three sets of six. We did some warm up sets before that to get him nice and warmed up, make sure that he's prepared for the lift. Then we went straight into the cross hook and then we grabbed the medicine ball and did an isometric squeeze as hard as he possibly could for 30 seconds. As soon as I saw him starting to fatigue, I got him to re-engage and squeeze as hard as he possibly could. You should be grimacing in your face that's when you know you're actually doing it properly. If you can, if you can do it with a stern face, but you're not pushing hard enough. And it's really important to get the adaptations that we're wanting to push as hard as you can into the ball, almost like you're doing a rear naked choke and tucking your elbows and driving them towards your hips. After we completed those three sets, we went into a double clustered exercise. So we are integrating one upper body core rotation exercise with the lower body split squat exercise. Both of these are going to help his power development. Now, Macarius has trained in the gym for less than a year. He's a 19 year old athlete. So we started off by using a band. If you're a more advanced athlete, you can use a cable machine, whatever the case is. But the main purpose is to stay really stable through that full rotation. So when we're coming through, we're rotating all the way, getting our hips to turn as well. To throw an effective punch, it actually starts from our hips. So we need to load and turn through the hips before we then move through the spinal complex. You might see his first couple of sets, he's actually a little bit shaky and, and unbalanced. So we needed to make sure that instead of going lower rep range for these specific exercises, we actually bumped it up like 12 to 15 reps, just so you can get coordination. When you're first doing a new exercise, if you do it at high reps, it's giving you more motor coordination. So it's getting your body used to moving in that pattern. We gave him less reps, the quality would have dropped significantly. So that's why we kept it at that 12 to 15. Immediately after doing his set on both sides, so rotating to the left and rotating to the right, we then moved into a Bulgarian split squat. You might notice that we used a squat rack and a barbell and put a foam roller around it so that he could pour a uh, pad trace around it so that he could lower himself down. The reason why we did that is newer athletes to Bulgarian split squats actually find it quite awkward to use a bench. And the reason because of that is having your back foot flat on the bench, it can be a little bit harder to sink into the bottom of the repetition. So if you have a squat rack, you can use at the gym. As seen with Macarius's reps, it's a much easier way because your, your ankle actually rolls up and down that pad instead of having to keep it flat to the bench the whole time and lowering yourself down. Really common mistake as well is that people, when they're lowering down, they arch their back. If you arch your back, you're not going to get significant length through your hip flexors and being able to add hip flexor length with the Bulgarian split squat is going to help facilitate that rotation and drive when you're throwing your strikes. So once we completed two sets of the Bulgarian split squat and the core rotational exercise, we moved straight into a gymnast ring face pull. Now, if you have a TRX apparatus at your gym, you can use that as well, but gym, gym rings work really, really well. You can grab them for $10, bring them to your gym, really good piece of equipment. What we were doing was a full reach with every rep, and a common mistake that I see is people don't come up towards their eye level, they sometimes finish the movement here. And what will happen if you do that, you need to shrug up. What we're wanting to do is keep the shoulder in a really neutral position. We're not shrugging, that way we're getting that contraction through the back of our shoulder. And then as he came back, he was leaning all the way into that movement so that we're getting a really good stretch 
through these rhomboids, these mid-back muscles here. And if you think about it, when we're throwing a strike, it's a very similar reaching position. So you can also add a couple of inches of reach to your punches by drilling that specific exercise. We then combined it with a shoulder isolation exercise immediately after. The most common mistake and the mistake that McCary has made was he's lifting his shoulder off the bench to get more range. So if I use the plate for this example, what we want to make sure of is the fact that if you're a taller athlete like Macarius, he's like six foot two, we're making sure that our arm hit is flush against this bench. If we're up higher, we're not going to be loading the rotator cuff and the stabilizers of our shoulder effectively. So driving that arm hit in, and then we're lowering down from there. Coming down, and then coming back up to this top position. If you want, you can go into a bit of external rotation, but we're mainly lengthening the back of our shoulder when we're doing this. So that's the most important cue for this exercise. Shoulder care is really, really important with striking athletes because they are throwing so much volume when it comes to punching. So this is a really good exercise to combat that. Once again, newer exercises for Macarius. So we did two sets of 12 to 15 repetitions just to enhance his motor coordination, build a little bit of muscular endurance as well with that exercise. Another thing that isn't showcased in this video that I think is really, really important is neck training. And I have a specific neck video that I'm going to leave it in bed right now. And I've also created a crucial neck guide. A link is in the description. We've got about 5,000 people that have downloaded it so far. Once we hit 10,000 downloads, there will no longer be free access to this program. 40 plus exercises, nine phases, bonus combat sport phases. So whoever you are, this is a very beneficial aspect of training. It is highly underrated, so go and check that out. The last exercise that we gave Vicarious was a reverse twist on the ground. And you might have noticed that he was holding two kettlebells, and the reason for that is to keep your shoulders into the ground. When we're rotating, we don't want this to happen to where our shoulder peels off. We want to keep them glued to the ground so that we're purposely using the lower half of our core when we're rotating across. Really, really important cue. So you should be using a weight less than probably 10 kilos or 20 to 25 pounds because the lighter the kettlebells, the harder it is for you to actually glue and fix your shoulders to the floor. This is primarily a core exercise and if we heal our shoulders off, it's actually going to be cheating the motion. Another really important consideration to make as well is when we're rotating, as soon as your shoulder needs to peel off, you need to shorten your range of motion. But this is a really, really good way to teach you how to rotate separately through your lower half of your body and your upper half of the body. The best strikers, the biggest power punchers have a really good ability to separate their hip drive and their upper body drive. These are two separate rotational movements. This works for the lower half, which is commonly neglected as a combat sport athlete or as an, any athlete in general. So we just ran through a full striking specific strength conditioning session with one of my clients. I hope you learned a ton from this video. This is a very small aspect of what we do with athletes. This was a day after one of his fights, an interclub fight, so we didn't give him as much as we usually do with most athletes during the week. But this is a really good snapshot of exactly what we're doing. So if this sort of stuff is what you want to learn more about, I suggest subscribing. If you have any specific questions about training, leave a comment below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible, and I'll see you on the next one.